Sorry about that. All right, our first question for Aaron comes from Kyle Austin. Hey, Aaron, congrats on the win. Just wondering, uh, you guys' mindset after that first 10 minutes, um, you come out kind of slow. How were you able to kind of turn things around after that start to the game? Um, <clears throat> with a team like that, it's tough. You know, it's they put so much pressure on you, whatnot, and it's different than what it looks on the TV or from you guys you know, being on the court. I just asked my guys and, and the coaching staff just to keep our composure, you know. Everybody's in a fight, you know. You, you get hit the first couple of times and you got to know how to respond. Those are those are where the champions stand. All players and all teams get hit, but it's how you respond and how you sustain yourself in, in the fight. And I felt like we did a good job of that. Our next question is from Jamal Spencer. Aaron, 10 points for you in the first half. A lot of your work done at the mid-range level and getting to the basket. Did you make it a point to be as aggressive early on as you were in this one? Uh, yes, sir. I just, I felt like the way they were playing us, you know, it, it, it took that out of me to be aggressive, to get to the rim, to make plays for others. I miss a lot of those touch shots around the rim, some free throws, some, some shots. Man, it just, I, I miss too many shots, to be honest, around the rim. I feel like that's unlike me, but, you know, to come out and perform the way I did, I felt it was enough to win. And um, I'm, that's all that matters to me is just that we won. We'll go to Matt Charbonneau next. Hey Aaron, I know you. I know you lose some guys that have played a lot of games there. Did you, did you know this kind of response was in this this team this early in the season? And did you guys kind of prove to yourselves a little bit right now that you, even only three games in, that you had that kind of resolve, that kind of fight, even when it started that way? Yes, sir. I feel like it starts at the head, and and, and being the person that I am, I'm I'm not going to ever fold or quit or put my head down when times get hard. You know, I've been hit with a lot harder things in my life, and I feel like on the court, you know, I can respond to anything, no matter how big the punch is or or how, how we take the punch. You know, I feel like everybody that, that comes here, you know, understands that it has that type of background to where they know how to respond to things on and off the court. And, and, and I'm really, really, really proud of our group and how we responded. I felt like we group, we see who the team we could be. And, you know, I hope we can sustain consistency throughout the season with that. Go to Lindsey Huddleston. Aaron, congratulations on the win. We did not know you would be making your coaching debut tonight. Can you talk about what it was like being on the sideline and just really being part of that coaching staff and helping your Spartans win tonight? Man, it's, I played in some, <clears throat> some, some big games, some tough games here. I've won some championships here. But, you know, the, the most important thing was, you know, I can, I can be on the same side with Coach Izzo. You know, I felt like we were in tune a whole bunch. He was listening to me. I was listening to him. And even his vision on the court and what he sees is not the same as ours. And that respect that he has for us on the court and what we see and, and how it returns to him, you know, I felt like, I was his voice out there, and, and that was that was the most comfortable part for me. You know, I can be an extension of him on the court, and it really gave our team some direction as well as some other players. Well, outstanding. Thank you. We'll go to Sarah Tidwell next. Hey, Aaron. So did you or do you have any concerns about traveling to play and the health risk risk it poses, and how is it kind of different from a normal season in non-pandemic? Uh, mass for sure. You know, um, I would like to say that, you know, our, our staff takes a takes huge, huge care, you know, of what we do, our hand sanitizer, our wearing our mask around the Breslin Center, wearing our mask to the gym and to home. You know, that's talked about just as much as basketball is around here. And the most important part is they care about us. You know, it's not just coach players. I don't want to say father, son, but it resembles a lot of that. And we each have respect for each other and we each want to see each other safe and sound and be able to play basketball. Next, we'll go to Chris Solari. Aaron, can you talk a little bit about the defensive job that you guys did after that that early start? Um, it, it, did you feel like your length and the perimeter in particular was bothersome for Duke? I just felt like we stayed we stayed true to the scouting report. You know, with, with the vets that we have, we have guys that are willing to listen, guys that are willing to be taught, and guys that are, that are just bear down and really defend. I feel like we can make a lot of a lot of teams uncomfortable in that position, especially with the length that we have and the versatility that we have can switch and we can guard different positions. But, you know, I felt the most important thing was, is what was our preparation all week. The scout team really, you know, if y'all watched the practice, the scout team almost looked like that Duke team out there, honestly, with, with Jack and Julius and AJ and how those guys prepped us for that. And they don't get enough credit for that. And we followed the game plan and we stick to it. We got time for two more here for Aaron. We'll start with Brendan Quinn. 
Hey, Aaron. Um, when it comes to you kind of becoming more of the focal point offensively, how much of it is you, I don't, I don't know, forcing yourself is the right word, but, but, you know, going into a game like this saying, yeah, I'm getting, I'm taking 15 shots. I'm taking 18 shots in this case, 21, whatever it was like, what, what did it take to kind of turn maybe your, your head into to leaning into that? Um, just coach. I mean, having the faith in me to, to, to put the ball in my hands like that, but, I feel just having the faith in myself to know the player that I am and I can compete at this level. And and he demands that out of me. He doesn't just, you know, give me the ball for any reason just to go out there and do anything with it. No, he demands me to be great. He holds me accountable to the highest standard standard that, you know, I had to raise for myself, honestly. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. And that coach looks at me like that and will do that for me. But, you know, for our team, I just feel like <clears throat> anything to win. You know, I missed a lot of those touch shots around the rim. That I felt like should have went and I missed a lot of free throws that, that I need that I should have hit you know 21 is maybe a high number for me you know maybe I could take a few off if that but with the way the game was going I felt like I got the shots that I wanted you know I can look out on film where I could get better but a lot of those shots around the rim I feel like that bounced around a lot I feel should have dropped but you know thanks to coach for putting me in those positions to get the ball thanks Sam. all right and our final question for Aaron comes from uh, Rico Beard Aaron, what was it like uh, being a part of the team that finally got Tom Izzo that uh, first win in Cameron? Can you describe that feeling? Man, it's for the things he's done for me and, and all the times that he's had my back behind closed doors, in my face, not in my face, man, it's, that's the least I can do for him. He's, he's helped me out in more ways than just getting a win for him tonight and very appreciative of that. And I'm happy for coaching in, in the career he's had. I'm happy I'm one of the players that got him a win here. And Cameron, it's a hard place to win from, from what I understand and with or without fans. And it was still tough. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy this happened and I'm happy, you know, I, I, I could do it with him. Thanks, man. All right, Aaron, that's all we have for you today. Thank you, man. See you guys. Up next, we'll be joined by Coach Izzo. You do realize the point is <laughs> All right, Coach, congrats on the win. If you want to start off with a uh, opening statement. Well, you know, we came down here to win a game, and uh, we talked about it. Uh, you know, I think I've done a poor job over the years. It seems like, you know, I either get too hyped for the game or I give them too much credit. I thought we were a good team that could beat them. I thought they had a good team, but I thought our defense and our depth, and it turned out that way, although early – we were so poor defensively and we followed every time they came down. But later on, you know, we, you know, give Josh a little credit and Aaron a lot of credit. I mean, we put Aaron at the point some and uh, he just did a hell of a job. You know, he did miss some easy shots, but boy, we, we rode him like a horse. I mean, he had to play the defensive end. He had to play the offensive end. And as him and I were talking on the way up here, you know, you play in the point and everybody wants to play the point until you play it and you don't realize how, Hard it was on Cassius or Rocket or, you know, but we had some other heroes too. Uh, Dr. Lawyer taking three charges, uh, you know, gets five rebounds. Uh, you know, Malik Hall was, was dynamite tonight, you know, and Julius Marble, who hardly even played last game. And I told our guys, it's going to be that way once in a while. It's going to be certain matchups that certain guys are going to be able to play. And they had, they had some, you know, some athletic and some long shooting bigs and, so it hurt uh, Thomas Gittier and, and uh, uh, Marcus Bingham a little bit more. But thank God we had some depth and we just kept running our people at them. And, you know, we didn't push the ball like I wanted. We didn't uh, handle the situation at the end like I wanted. But uh, the good thing is um, that'll be for tomorrow in the film session. Uh, tonight I'm going to smile and enjoy it because uh, I haven't done a very good job against Duke and uh, – Still haven't. If you talk about a uh, rivalry, you know, rivalry's got to be a rivalry when both teams are, are winning games and it's been one sided. So this is one step in the right direction. All right. We've got some questions for coach in the chat. Coach, if I could, if, if you could pull the top of the, the laptop towards you just so we get there perfect. There we go. Uh, first question comes from uh, a few times. Yeah, this is one of the rare times. I wish every one of you were here with me. Damn. 
usually I could care less, but now I'm, I kind of want you here and you guys are a thousand miles away. Oh, Go well, ahead. Our first question comes from Chris Solari. Well, it was an interesting deal covering a game from TV, that's for sure. And probably had a better view of it than we did, but defensively, um, particularly from the, the midpoint of that second half or first half on, it seemed like you guys locked them up. Uh, how much do you feel like their length bothered them? And and you mentioned lawyer, but that's those two charges early in the first half seemed to really kind of jumpstart you guys. Let me tell you something. Pastor Lawyer acted like a captain and played like a captain. He was Rocket's biggest cheerleader. He was ready to go when he came in. I just, you know, some guys could have hung their heads and done this and done that. Joshua Langford, even though I wouldn't say had a great game, um, he did some good things on that bench too. And he did some good things in those huddles. Because we were a little out of control, you know. Uh, Rocket got a little bit crazy there for a while as far as out of control. And uh, they wanted to speed him up. And But our wings didn't do a very good job either. I mean, we got a lot of coaching to do. Uh, special situations at the end. Uh, poor job by the head coach. So uh, everybody's got to take a little blame. And everybody should take a little credit. But uh, it was kind of, other than Aaron, uh, you know, Rocket a little bit. It was kind of our peripheral guys. That really played well and made the difference in this game. Our next question comes from Lindsey Huddleston. Yeah, Coach, uh, I know everyone wants to congratulate you on that first win inside Cameron, and they wish they could be there. Uh, yesterday, we talked about the NBA scouts tuning in. You think they were impressed tonight? Well, I, I think Aaron Henry showed a lot. You know, I mean, he's 7 for 21, and you're going to say that wasn't too good. But, you know, what he's starting to show is ability to get in the paint, his ability to handle the ball. I mean, we, we rode him, like I said, like a horse. I don't know how many minutes he played. It had to be 36, 37 minutes. And he had a guard. He had to play the point. He had to king it up against pressure some. He had to make all those uh, tough plays, get in the paint. Um, we did a lot of things. I mean, I, I'm so proud of him because, you know, he came back. And I told you guys, I told him, I don't want a guy in your halfway. You know, there's no such thing as being half. You know what? And so... Um, he wasn't half, he was all in, he wants to get better. And, uh, you know, he's learning, he's learning more every day and, uh, and I'm learning too. And uh, I think there's getting to be an enormous trust. It's kind of funny what we all been through, but, uh, I love the way he responded and I'm really proud of him. Great. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next question is from Sarah at the state news. Hey, coach. So how are you feeling about having traveled for the first time tonight this season and about traveling, you know, for future games? What are your biggest concerns health wise coming into other states or cities and bringing that back home? Yeah, you know, we, we really the protocol we followed was unbelievable. Our doors <clears throat> on our hotel were sealed shut till we got in there. Um, nobody came in to, to do any, you know, towels or anything today. Our meals were prepared, but then we served ourselves. Uh, I thought our people, our administration, our medical people, and our trainer did an unbelievable job. Our managers, we kept it pretty close ranks. Um, on the airplane, we were masked the whole time. So mask up America. And uh, we did that every minute of every day. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. You know, something could happen tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, really proud of my team and how they're handling this. I told you guys early. This adversity is going to be part of the deal. And the depth thing is going to be part of the deal. And uh, so it's a good thing I've been playing a lot of people, even though some people might question it. Our next question is from Rico Beard. Tom, uh, with the poor start with your team, what was, the, what was said in the huddle? And how did you calm those guys down and get them to play Michigan State basketball? And, and also, did it feel any different getting that victory, but with no Cameron crazies? Well, the first part of it, uh, they had to calm me down. I was ticked off early. I mean, we did not defend. And we said we were going to come out. We got punched in the mouth last year. We said we were going to try to do the punching. And they did it again to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I was very disappointed in. Um, and so we talked about it. Joshua Langford did a pretty good job in those huddles and Aaron Henry. And, um, we just said, we got to defend without falling. I mean, I think they had eight free throws in the first couple of minutes, you know, yeah. they had 17 in the first half and, uh, they made, you know, 14 of them. We made four. That's 10 point difference right there. It's hard to be up when you're 10 down in the free throw situation. 
So I think we did a better job of that. And then we took care of the ball a little bit. And then Aaron went on a little run there. Foster hit a big shot. Uh, you know, uh, give Julius Marble, man. He hit that corner jumper. And then he did some nice things that dunk late. Uh, we got a lot of play out of a lot of guys, you know. Gabe Brown, you know, played pretty good defensively, but he didn't. He, could, he just didn't make a shot tonight. But that's what Gabe can do. I'm not worried about that. I, I got faith in him. So I, I think we just got back to defending, rebounding, and running, and that's kind of uh, what our culture is. And I don't know if we forgot about it or maybe maybe give Duke credit too. I mean, too, hey, that's a very good team we beat, and they have a lot of really really good guards. <laughs> And the Johnson kid is really good. He got in foul trouble, but our kid Hauser got in foul trouble. So that was kind of a wash. Next, we'll go to Justin Rose. Hey, Tom, uh, kind of piggybacking off what Rico asked you, it, it seemed that, you know, watching it at home, it was kind of quiet in there. You could hear all the calls and all the defensive switches and whatnot. I mean, college basketball is supposed to be played in front of people is what I took away from that. How, how different, at least through three games, has it been for you? Yeah, I apologize to Rico because I didn't answer the second half of his question. But the truth of the matter is um, it is different, but you'd be amazed. Once the game starts, you know, you get caught up in the game and you, you kind of don't realize the crowd. Now, at the end, when they were coming back, banking in threes and stuff, I'm sure the crazies could have made it even crazier. But I think the Islam could make it crazy at our place, too. So we're losing out some, uh, you know, um, I know one thing, I'm not going to put this as an asterisk. No fans or not fans. Uh, you know, it was a good win for us against a good team, a great program, and a very, very well-coached team. We'll go to Graham Couch. Tom, obviously what happened against Notre Dame the other day, it looked like a, a, a dominating stretch, right? Did, did, yourself, did you need to see something like this to be sure of what you had? I did. We talked about that. At halftime, before the game, and in a couple of the huddles, you know, we had a 26-0 run because we locked up a team. And um, and the players started talking about it. So that was a positive, but we didn't necessarily execute it. But we didn't have a good rotation either. I thought, you know, we played Aaron too much. There were times when, uh, you know, Joey was in foul trouble. So we didn't have a smooth rotation. So as I said, we've got a lot of things to work at and get better at, but Remember, Duke's going to get a lot better, too. So don't put all the credence in. You know, we played good. Um, it was a game that we sort of matched up with what we could. You know, we're going to have games when they got big centers, and we're going to be in trouble that way. There will be games when other teams guard us. But we got checked tonight. They came at us and pressured us. We had 15 turnovers, but that's not outrageous. They had 12. So um, considering the fact that uh, – we had about eight of them in the first uh, 10 minutes. That's pretty good. Go to Larry Lage. Hey, Tom, uh, Julius Marble, did you see that coming out of anywhere? I did. I did. How about that? You know, I'm going to be cocky and say I did. I, I Actually, he came into my office the other day. We sat down and talked, and he's been on the scout team, and he's been so good on the scout team. He's been a four-man on the scout team, really shooting the ball. But he's moving his feet better. He's putting the ball on the floor better. So when we get back and you guys asked Julius, I think he'd say he saw it too. You know, he's, he's been patient. I, I, you know, this is going to be hard for some guys because certain nights, certain guys aren't going to play as much. And, uh, and some of it will be the situation and some of it, when they get a chance, you know, you got to produce. That's the way it is at major college basketball. So, um, you know, I still like the fact that uh, we got a lot of guys, we got a lot of ball out of a lot of guys. But don't downplay Foster Lawyer's contribution, not only as a player, not only defending, but also leading. He was phenomenal in those huddles. We'll go to Kyle Austin. Hey, Tom, question about Aaron. Uh, you spent so much time the last couple of years kind of trying to get him to take that next step and be a main guy for you. How have you seen him embrace this role that he's had this year? You know, it's, it's funny. I, I, I watch different programs. I watch different people go at people. I think it's because it's Michigan State and it's me. You know, everybody looks at it like it's so bad. It's not that bad, guys. You know, it's what you do. You know, every one of you that have kids do the same thing. You know, they, if they don't do their job, you tell them. And if they don't do it again, you tell them in a different way. And uh, I've never had a problem with Aaron. You know, my only problem with Aaron is I think he's got to be more consistent to go harder 
uh, more consistently in a longer period of time. And, uh, you know, his dad and I have been on the same page. Believe it or not, Aaron and I have been on the same page. Hey, he could have left. He didn't leave. And, uh, you know, he's growing up so much. He's been, he's been 10 times better. You know what the saddest part of that is? This is normal. This is what normal is. But we're in a new normal now. And the new normal is you better be out of here by the time you're a sophomore or you're a dog. He ain't going to be a dog and he's going to be a good pro someday. And, uh, you know, I think he, he's learning that, uh, yeah, he's got more things he's got to do and he's got to get better at more things. And he's going to get better. Because he works at it now. He works at it every day. He understands it. And uh, when we talk about things, he's, he's just right on the money with it. You know, he knows what he's doing. He knows what I'm doing. And that's kind of the process. It, it takes a little time. We always want thing, the new millennials, they want thing yesterday. It doesn't happen that way, right, Lindsay? We have time for two right. more questions. <laughs> we'll start with Nate Atkins and then wrap up with Brendan Quinn. Nate? Yeah, and Julius Marble, how much does it help a young player to have a game like this against Duke to see his game succeed against one of the best teams in the country? I think Julius is a guy that you're going to talk to next, and I think if you ask him, uh, Julius didn't do it in this game. He's done it the last two weeks in practice. I mean, he's prepared for it. He's um, not complained about it, but he was concerned about it, you know, wanted a chance. What do I got to do? And uh, we had a great talk the other day. And, uh, you know, you got to pull for a guy. He's been through a lot this summer and, and everything uh, with his father. And, um, you know, it's another guy that I'm so proud of because he's, he's kind of weathered the storm. We put him on a scout team. We said we've had starters on the scout team that get better. And he is taking full advantage. So was it a surprise? No. I've seen this for two weeks. And I just kept saying, I got to get Julius in there. And it just wasn't the right timing, you know. It, and, and uh, I, I told him tonight before the game, be ready. And sure enough, we got him in there in that first half and give him a lot of credit. He responded. <clears throat> he's smart. He's athletic. And he's got the one thing I love. He's tough. Uh, he's shooting the ball better than I thought he would. He made some big plays. Uh, and uh, he deserved everything he got. He, 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 he earned it. Our last question, we'll go to Matt Charbonneau. Brendan and Yield, it is time. So, Matt Charbonneau. You caught me off guard. I wasn't ready there. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, Tom. I, I know you talked earlier about you wanted to hit them in the mouth first. And it feels like a lot of years we see these games early in the season. And, you know, you learn from them and you get better as you go. But is there something to be said about playing one of these games, not playing well early, but figuring out a way to win? And coming out of one of these with a win instead of always trying to kind of you know have that loss that you try and build from it just feels better as a win yeah, don't get me wrong I, I i'd rather win than lose i can learn a lot I, i'm gonna tell you something i'm gonna learn a lot on the way home on this airplane because we made so many mistakes tonight now i'm sure they did too but we did make a lot of mistakes but it, it's a lot easier as a coach to learn with a win under your belt and you're right you know i played a lot of these games and it might seem to you that I've accepted, okay, we got beat, but we're going to get better on. You know, I'd rather win some of them early and get better on too. And and hopefully this will give some of our guys the confidence to know that, you know, right now we're making a statement. Our defense is traveling. And I think we, you know, I don't think we were as good uh, as we were against uh, for 30 minutes of that Notre Dame game. But this was a harder team to cover. They had guards that were jet quick. Their bigs could shoot threes, as you saw the guy banks in one at the end. And um, I thought we had a lot of guys that played. We had to play team basketball. We had to shrink the court. Um, you know, this is where Rocket helped us defensively. Uh, but we we made mistakes. But you're right. Um, this time I'm going to learn with a win instead of a loss. And I've done a lot of learning from losses. And that was good. Let's see if I'm a good learner from wins. So you guys can analyze that in the next week or two because uh, we got to turn around now. We got short turnarounds, travel. We got a lot of things to to overcome here, and uh, we're gonna get it done though. So you'll enjoy Julius. Spend some time with him. You had enough time with me. I appreciate you guys all staying up and being there. I do wish you would have been here because I think you would have enjoyed it. It wasn't the prettiest, but it was a grinded out Michigan State win. And as our offense gets better. I think we're going to get a lot better. And uh, so I appreciate y'all. Uh, 
let me introduce uh, the new semi star until I get him home tomorrow. You'll be back in the doghouse, Julius. Cool. Right, we'll take questions for Julius in the chat. First one comes from Chris Solari at the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Julius. Coach has been talking uh, basically the first week of the season saying, man, I need to get Julius more minutes. Um, I, I guess in those 12 minutes, did you go out trying to show anything in particular, or was it just a situation being on the scout team where maybe you knew some things about their guys that, that you wouldn't have known otherwise? Yeah, it was a little bit of the scout team. Um, you know, I knew a little bit more than I probably would have if I was on the first team because I, you know, studied the player. I knew all their tendencies and stuff like that. So it did help with that. And I wasn't like going out to try and like, you know, get a basket or this and that. I was just trying to do my role. And it just so happened I was able to score some points and, you know, be a spark off the bench. Our next question is from Stephen Brooks. Hey, Julius. I hope you're doing well, man. Um, coaches, I just talked about uh, you coming to see him and you guys had a talk and I sort of got the sense that it was about, you know, more opportunity for you, I guess. Um, just what, what led to that meeting? What were the conversations like? Um, and yeah, you know, what, why did that all come about? Well, yeah, the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, he's been telling me I've been doing great in practice and, you know, I've been making strides and this and that. And I was one, you know, the Eastern Michigan game, I got three minutes and then Notre Dame, I got two. So I felt like if I'm making strides, I should get a little bit more minutes. So I talked to him about it and, you know, trying to see what I'm doing wrong, like what's keeping me off the court and stuff like that. And he just said, you know, it's just about managing rotations and uh, getting other guys chances and this and that, and just telling me to stay ready. And, you know, that's what I did today. So. Thank you. Next we'll go to Matt Charbonneau. Julius, what was the key early on? You guys came out a little flat, some turnovers, not playing very well. What was, what was the talk on the sideline? What, what was it that got you guys to turn that around so quickly? Uh, I mean, we just, you know, we came out a little slow. I don't know what it was, but, you know, I, I was, you know, I was in there saying, you know, let's not get punked. We're getting punked right now. Let's, like, you know, get back on defense, get some stops, and let's, like, go out on offense because they really couldn't guard. And at first, we just kept taking bad shots and forcing things. So, uh, you know, the coach was telling us, you know, get to the basket, run our offense, and all that stuff. So that's what we did when we came back out. Next, we're going to Paolo. Hi, Julius. So obviously you have a career high and um, you and Malik are combined for 14 in the first, I guess, what does it mean to you to kind of, I don't know, show what you have out there, hit a baseline jumper, hit us and, you know, have a slam. And I guess, what does it mean to kind of be in there with Malik and showcase a couple different lineups for you guys? Uh, I mean, it, it feels pretty good. You know, uh, that's that's one of my best friends on the team. Um, roommates too, so it's good to go out there and play with your roommate. And it's even better to, you know, you know, play good with your roommate and then come out with the win. So, like, ultimately, that was the biggest thing, and I'm glad we were able to do that. Thanks, Julius. Next, we'll go to Sarah Tidwell. Hey, Julius. Did you or do you have any concerns about traveling to play this season with the pandemic and all? Uh, no, I don't really have any um, concerns about that. You know, I, I just want to play basketball. Um, so I'll do whatever I need to do in order to play basketball. So whatever, whatever, like, you know, restrictions they have for us, um, I'm all for it as long as I get to play. All right, we got time for two more for Julius. Jane, I'm sorry, I accidentally skipped over you. So we'll go to Jane and Bartle now. It's okay. Hi, Julius. Just wondering if you can take us back to that slam you had um, from the assist from Aaron, walk us through that play and how it felt afterwards and during it. Yeah, no, I, I just, I didn't, honestly, I didn't think he was going to pass it to me at first because I was like a little too close and then the guy went and helped and then it made it easier for me to uh, go up and dunk it. And I, I mean, I didn't think I got high enough at first, but I said, you know, I got to go for it. And so I went and did it and it felt really good because, you know, we're at Duke and, you know, I kind of hate Duke. So in order to do that, it felt really good. Thank you. All right. All right. And our final question for Julius comes from Brendan Quinn. Julius, when, um, when, when you're trying to prove that you want more playing time and your minutes come more in spurts, right, two minutes at a time, things like that, just, just how hard is it to not try to do everything the second you get on a floor because you want to prove yourself that, that you want more? There's, what's the balance there? 
Um, I mean, I learned a lot last year from that. Uh, X was a, like an instrumental guy and telling me like, when you get in there, just make sure you do what you need to do and not try and do anything outside yourself. So this year I knew if I get the opportunity, just make sure I play my game and make sure I do whatever I need to do to help the team. And yeah, it is hard and like it did take some learning, but you know, I'm starting to figure out a little bit and I want to make sure that I'm doing whatever we can or whatever I can to help the team win. Thanks, man. All right, Julius, appreciate your time tonight. Congrats on the win. Appreciate y'all. You have a good night. <laughs> All right, and our final student athlete is going to be Rocket Watts here in a moment. Our first two questions will come from Chris Solari and then Jim Comperoni. Chris. Rocket, good to see you. Um, I, I guess – what was Coach Izzo's message to you guys in the locker room? And what was that celebration like to get him the win at Duke? I go, I'm pretty sure you guys know what it means to him. Man, it just means a lot. You know, I didn't know that, you know, this is basically like the first time we, you know, beat Duke at their um, crib. So, you know, just halftime, Coach was just on us. You know, he was cussing us out a lot because I feel like they came out and hit us first. But, you know, we came out second half and, you know, we stayed together and we executed on offense and, you know, came out with the win. So that's real big for us. Next, we'll go to Jim Comperoni. Hey, Rocket, with the way Duke came after you on defense to pressure the ball, and you knew that that was coming but yeah. once you got through it and got through the opening minutes, did you learn something in the, in the process? Do you think you can grow from this now that you saw some – I know you, you went through a lot last year, but this time being the quarterback and in that situation, can you grow from this now? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I just got to learn how to – you know, pace myself with the ball, you know, when they pressure me, I feel like I get out of control at, you know, you know, sometimes and I just try to, you know, score the ball, but, you know, I just got to execute and, you know, pass the ball when they pressure me and, you know, when the ball come back, then I look to score and I feel like I was out of control at one point in time, but, you know, I just kept my head on and we came out doing. What were the instructions when coach was getting on you at halftime and getting on the whole team or even after the first five minutes, what were the instructions to get through that storm as a team um, yourself? I mean, it's a process, you know, this is my first year playing point guard, you know, on the big stage. And, you know, I just got to work on, you know, just take care of the ball when they press me and, you know, don't get out of control. So, you know, that's something I need to work on. And, yeah. Thank you. All right. Our next question comes from Paolo. All right, we'll go to uh, Stephen Brooks next. Thanks, man. Hey, uh, uh, Rocket, hope you're doing well, man. Um, I want to ask you a couple of things about Aaron. Um, when you guys were, were struggling a little, bit, a little bit early, how important was his sort of aggressiveness and assertiveness? It seems like he was really playing um, at a different level early that sort of kept you guys, uh, kept the energy up and everything when things weren't going well. How important was that early from him? Um, that was really important. You know, we expect a lot of Aaron. You know, he a captain. Um, you know, he's just a great player and a great teammate. And I feel like he played a big role towards the end of the game. Um, you know, he was just scoring the ball, doing a lot of things, rebounding, standing in gaps on defense, and, you know, just keeping his head on and talking to us, you know, when Duke when Duke was making a run. So you know, I feel like he played a big part in the win tonight. And, you know, he's a great player and a great teammate. Shout out to him. And uh, when it comes to him, you know, the, the TV broadcasts, obviously none of us were there. Um, it kept showing him being very active uh, vocally as a leader, very demonstrative, talking with coach, um, all your coaches and everything. Was that what he's been doing this whole season, or was this even a different level from him tonight in that regard, do you think? Um, he's been doing the whole season. I feel like, you know, during the summer, you know, he's been, he been talking a lot, being vocal. You know, um, last game he was being vocal, and that's something we expect of him, you know, as I said. So, you know, he going to have a big year, and, you know, he played good tonight, and, you know, he, he was being a leader. Thank you. All right, we got time for two more. We'll start with Paolo and then wrap up with Brendan Quinn. So Rocket, obviously you're kind of out of the rhythm early. What did it, what were you looking for early in the second half to kind of get going? You know, you started pulling up from three and driving and I guess what got you to that game high 20 point performance? Um, in the first half, I felt like I was just, I was out of control, you know, and um, you know, the coach is just getting on me and I couldn't, I couldn't just keep my head on at that time. So I feel like, you know, the second half, I just came out just playing aggressive and, you know, taking care of the ball and just seeing what they was giving me. And, um, and yeah, I was just, I was just executing on offense and, you know, attacking a defense. So, yeah. 
All right, our last question comes from Brendan Quinn. Hey, Rocky, you talked about Aaron um, defensively and, and, and playing the gaps and things like that. I wonder in your development, um, have you studied kind of the, the intricacies of his defense and how much have you learned from him? Um, no, I, I'm, I haven't learned anything from him. You know, he's he a great player and he played defense. And, you know, we all we all play together. And that's something, that's something we, we um, you know, we play by. We have each other backs on defense and we all, you know, we stay in the gaps and stuff like that. So you know, I feel like our, um, bench, our um, bench did a good job. Our teammates, everybody did a good job. The coaching staff, you know, and just came out and played hard the second half and we came out with the win. Great. Thank you. All right. All right, Rocket, we're going to let you go there. I know there's more questions, but uh, I know you guys got to get back as well. So safe travels. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. All right. And that's going to wrap us up for tonight. Appreciate you guys hanging with us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Matt. Thanks, Matt.